Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. And the conversation continues right now. The final lap of the conversation is talking about COVID-19 and vaccines. And the news is that the head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, has received the first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, we have joining us here, Mr. Victor Okai, uh, to discuss this. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Yes. So now in this part of the world, some religious leaders, you know, believe that COVID-19 is fake. They believe that uh, the COVID-19 vaccine is worse. That it, they believe it to do damage to them. They believe it's antichrist. We've seen conspiracy theories like that and how these opinion have gone on to influence the thousands of members or thousands of people who, who listen to them, who follow them. But now the head of the Catholic Church here has taken the COVID-19 vaccine. How do you think this would influence the, the, you know, the opinion about COVID-19 uh, and the vaccine among religious circles, especially in Nigeria? Okay. Um, <clears throat> first, what I would like to say is this, that uh, the skepticism we have had in or should be dispelled at a time. The reason is that they, they are not starting to vaccine in Africa. Otherwise, we would have said to the bikini pigs. Okay? So, the vaccines they have made, they are starting with. And if anything goes wrong with the vaccine, I mean, uh, against them, they will correct it before it ever gets to happen. So, I do not see anything to worry about. Okay? And then, <clears throat> the Pope. I think the reality is the Pope. When his partner you know, uh, died of COVID. He brought him closer home. Brought him closer home to him. And then, uh, for many people in this part of the world, particularly uh, certain denominations that are saying there's no COVID or they are playing it lightly, uh, I think it's very, very unfortunate. There is a place for faith. There is a place for science. There are things that are called laws. And when a thing is called a law, it means that, that it has been set over time, proven, and it can be replicated and over. An example is the law of gravity. You know, whatever goes up must come down because of the pull of gravity. And the higher you take the thing, the, the greater the fall will be. Okay? And so, Jesus, understanding this, when the devil came to tempt him, took him to the pinnacle of the temple, and told him to jump down, and quoted some 91 to him, like some pastors will quote the Bible here and will quote the faith, and said to him, if you jump down, if you fall down, he will give his angels concerning me, a charge concerning you, lest you dash your foot against the school. Now, Jesus realized that there was a place for science and there's a place for faith. He knew he was living in the physical realm. He recognized that there is a law of gravity and that in this physical flesh, if you were to fall down from the pinnacle of the temple, his body would cut into, into many places. And so in his wisdom, he told the devil, Thou shalt not tempt God thy God. In the same vein, I'm talking to religious people, religious leaders, and religious fanatics, that thou shalt not tempt the God thy God. Secondly, the Bible says, or God says in the Bible, that I will have mercy on whom I will have. So, if you can be righteous, you can be unrighteous. If you are afflicted by COVID, God did not say he will have mercy only on the righteous. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. You may be very, very righteous, and the day you are done with COVID, God will so love you, he might decide, look, my son, come, or my daughter, come home with me. Eh? You cannot question God. The rest of you can cry all you want. But God loves that person and wants to take him home. 
whether he's ready or not. And so I say to a lot of people, be very careful. All right. Um, God might decide to love you too much when you have COVID and call you back home. So, yeah? so, it's, be so it's best it's best to not have, have it. it. Only who we have it. All right, I, I'm, Mr. Okai, I want I want you to respond to um, a perspective of this whole conversation. The Pope um, quoted after taking the vaccine in his words said, I really don't understand why some people say this could be a dangerous vaccine. He said, if doctors can say, or if doctors say it can work well and you don't have special dangers, why not take it? He then says, there's a suicidal denialism that I would not know how to explain, but the vaccine must be taken. So I, I want you to address that suicidal denialism, like, uh, you know, the Pope has uh, mentioned. Um, what do you think has led, you know, us to have so many people living in that level of denial um, and, um, you know, needing political leaders and religious leaders to take something so, you know, um, some, I mean, a vaccine to convince them to do it, you know, to go, go ahead and take it also? Well, I thought there was something my wife posted today on WhatsApp. It showed, um, some of you have seen it, it's a picture of uh, a clove of garlic, garlic, a ball. There. Yes. And then there was, in between, they took a they removed one, they removed one piece, they took the clove out of it back from the ball. And then they replaced it with tangerine, a, 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 you know, one part of it, that exact, and it fitted. And what they said was that just because it fits does not mean it belongs there. Now, let me explain my opinion. We happen to be living in a part of the world where... Um, Particularly the poorer people, and I, I, this was something I read from Guido Kute as well this morning. He said, he said, a lot of the poor people don't get afflicted, and many of the rich people get afflicted. And the reason for that is because many of the poor people are out in the sun all day. And because of that, we, they get a good supply of vitamin C, of vitamin D3. Okay, which helps to protect it against the virus. And many big men move from what from air conditioning room and they don't even they have the eye in the future. So because we because of the protection we get in this of vitamin D, and because we don't seem to see too many people dying, like uh uh Bill Amin that people does not mean that people will not die from it. Does not mean that COVID doesn't kill. And like I said, somebody else may be lucky. What guarantee is there that you yourself will be lucky mm -hmm. when you are hit? All right, Mr. Mr. Okai, I wanted to ask you, do you think the government should involve more religious leaders to create more awareness of the virus? I think they should hold them accountable because they're opinion leaders. They need to sit down with them and get them to talk more responsibly. Um, I think it's highly responsible for anybody to tell anybody that there's no COVID or that they should just go on living their lives, thing like that. I don't expect us to live in paranoia. I don't expect us to begin to live in total panic. But at the same time, People have to do the right thing, maintain right. social distancing, wear their masks responsibly, and always wash their hands. Mm. Very simple protocols that do not require a vaccine. Okay? okay. It is important that we employ, that we, we partner with our religious leaders, who people, who a lot of people believe in much more than government, and even the doctors, and get them to pass on the right now. Oh, well, un un unfortunately, some of those religious leaders, we're out of time. Um, unfortunately, some of those religious leaders, like you've just mentioned, that a lot of people believe in, uh, are also, you know, putting out the conspiracy theories against COVID-19 and discouraging people from taking it seriously, unfortunately. Uh, Victor Okai, thank I you so much.
Thank you um, for joining us. Uh, yeah, for joining us. Uh, we're we're uh, really, really short on time with this conversation. We hope that we can bring you in again soon. Uh, thanks uh, for your time. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Um, that's where we will be wrapping it up this morning. You know, like I said, uh, yes, religious leaders are opinion, you know, shapers and makers. Um, and it's important that we understand, you know, the value of thinking for ourselves. You know, so sometimes when your pastor says something that may not really, really make sense, it's okay that you, you know, also you do your disagree. own reading and, and do your do own your investigation. Research. Yeah, yes. exactly. Research and decide, okay, pastor doesn't believe in COVID-19, but he can take a vaccine here. You know, I would, I would, you know, go take the vaccine mm -hmm. and I would, you know, uh, keep myself safe. Um, if I am, you know, foolish, you know, there's no amount of prayer that's going to save me on the, in this time. But anyway, thanks very much for being with, with us on The Breakfast this morning, even if it started off a little rocky. Um, and we hope that you totally enjoyed it. The news comes up at 9 a.m. this morning. And of course, uh, remember to join us on social media. Yes, we are Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and as well as YouTube. Thank you very much again for keeping it a day to us every day at 7 a.m. to 9. I am Annetta Felix. I am Osaogi Ogbon. And the breakfast is back here again tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. For now, it's goodbye. See you at 9.